everybody. I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. And by the way, Merry Christmas and we are all about it tonight. I have a very special guest all the way from Chapel Hill. And y'all, this isn't her first time on The Very Vera Show. Sherry Castle. Sherry, welcome. Delighted to be back. I'm so glad you could clear your calendar to be with us. And you know, when she was here before, she was talking about this book that she was working on. And here it is, hot, literally hot off the press. That's right, came out in October. The Southern Living Community Cookbook. And tell us a little bit about what this project involved. What it involved was is they, Southern Living asked me to write a book for them. Great honor and privilege. And they said, we want to do a tribute to those old-fashioned, spiral-bound community cookbooks that we all know and love. And I chose as my community the devoted readers of the magazine who for 50 years have shared the best of their hometown kitchens they really have. and their family tables. So you know what I got to do? I read all 45,000 recipes, every recipe that has been printed from oh February my. 1966 through February of this year, and from it I picked my favorites. Wow, that is a record I am sure and unbelievable. So we are going to make four of these recipes right. on the show tonight, and what are those four? We are going to make old-fashioned bourbon balls. We're gonna make crunchy caramel corn and peanuts. Wow. An amazingly moist and delicious banana bread with a cinnamon streusel topping and one of my favorite beverages in the book, which is a milk, a party punch that is made of milk and bourbon of all things. Oh my goodness, well, I can't wait to do that one. So let's get started with these um, bourbon balls. Great, it's a classic recipe that makes such a great holiday gift. You have in there a little light corn syrup and this okay. is our bourbon. And you can use any kind of bourbon you I'm want. Getting, I'm getting dizzy, that's, stirring. <laughs> it's, that's right. And then this is mostly powdered sugar and a little bit of cocoa powder. And we're going to put that in there and make a little smooth batter. Oh, you know what, Sherry? I'm going back. My memory bank mm -hmm. is kicking in because I can smell that smell. And it reminds me of the holidays. Exactly. Because I know my mom and my mother made these as part of the array of the little pickup desserts that we had it, at Christmas time. Exactly. And they can be made ahead of time, which means the longer they sit, the better they get. So you can knock these out. And it's a good thing to do with children if you want. This is crushed vanilla wafer crumbs. All okay. I did is put them in a baggie and whale the daylights out of them with a rolling pin. Now, are you picky about your brand of you vanilla know, wafers? I believe in vanilla. I really think I that love vanilla, vanilla makes, too. just like you'd use for banana pudding. And here are some finely chopped pecans. You could use other nuts, but we're southerners, so we're going pecans. Oh, wow. And you keep stirring, and it takes a little stirring. Okay. And when you get it all stirred in, it comes together loosely like this. Oh, I see. Yeah, it just, you know, it, it takes about maybe, maybe 30 seconds, a minute of stirring. And then it is like playing with good modeling clay. So you line your baking sheet with some parchment or aluminum foil. And then with your fingers, you pick up little bits of this and look. It's like making balls. Oh, me. How easy. Well, now that would be fun to do with the children. Absolutely. And, uh, you, you know, I usually keep them around bite size, but they mm -hmm. can be a little bit more. And when you get yourself three or four or 12, it makes about three dozen, the recipe does. When you get the little balls, take some more of your powdered sugar. And then oh, all you do, do absolutely is roll so them around just in that. Roll them in exactly, that. and you can you want to store them in something airtight that oh, can that be. Oh, that is so pretty. Yeah, it can be an old-fashioned tin. You know, a lot of people have those gorgeous decorator tins right. that you can put in there, and or you can make you know a little Tupperware, whatever it is. And what's the giving. shelf life on something like this? Oh gosh, they will keep for weeks. I mean, you could you could make them. Uh, a month ahead, you can make them two days ahead. I will say that I think that they improve the texture and the bourbon flavor, both mellows and is more pronounced after about two weeks. Well, Sherry, while you were putting this together and deciding your recipes, were they the ones that seemed to be the most reminiscent or the ones that sounded the best? I mean, what was your criteria? It was a combination. I wanted everything to be delicious, obviously, for a cookbook, but I wanted it to be a combination of like, oh gosh, I remember that. My aunt right. made Right, that's kind of the way I'm feeling when I'm looking at it. But yet some brand new things, some innovative things, so it should be a combination of like, I remember and who knew. Well, who knew? And you're going to know a lot more as we continue through this show tonight. So come back with us after the break. We're going to get started on that delicious candy popcorn. Welcome back and Merry Christmas. And if you're just joining us, I have as my special guest tonight, Sherry Castle 
from Chapel Hill, and y'all, she has written the most wonderful cookbook that Southern Living commissioned her to do, the community cookbook with all of your favorite recipes from all of those, like Charleston receipts. Right. Tea Time at the Masters, y'all, made it in there yeah. with some of its recipes, but it is a great book, be a great Christmas gift. But we are in the process of doing a popcorn dish. Exactly, good old fashioned caramel corn. It is so easy and it makes a wonderful gift, not to mention a snack for all those holiday guests. Well, and I think that's the thing. I think people get overwhelmed with having what they've got to get done. And this is something that you can do ahead. Absolutely. And it's something that has a great shelf life mm -hmm. that if you want to make a few extra friend gifts right. to have if somebody pops in unexpected. Exactly. So what have we got going right here? This has been bubbling for about five minutes now. It is it is light corn syrup, molasses, butter, and dark brown sugar. And here at the very end, we're going to put in some vanilla. And let's set it right here. Yes, put it right there. Absolutely. And then this is a little bit of salt and baking soda. That baking soda is going to react with the molasses. Woo! See the bubble? Okay, so do you want me to stir yes, it? Yes, please. What that's doing, that's turning that into almost like toffee. If you've ever oh, made wow. old fashioned toffee with the, with the um, molasses and so forth. So what we have is some popped popcorn. You can make that fresh or you can buy popcorn, but you want to make sure it's plain. And y'all, the Fresh Market already has it popped for you. Absolutely. I and told you they were my favorite store. They are ready to go. And then we're adding peanuts, like Cracker Jacks would be, but you know, if you prefer another kind of nut in this, you can okay, use Okay, so now this is changing. That's right, that's exactly what, what you want, like toffee. And then we're gonna pour that bubbly, thick, candy mixture over this and then we're going to toss and stir and toss and stir. This is really a lot of candy. It's not just a light glaze. Oh, wow. It is um, almost like popcorn balls except in little pieces. And then when this all gets tossed and tossed and tossed, we're going to spread it on this cookie sheet and it goes in the oven for an hour. Oh, I get the fun it every part. 15 minutes. And then it, um, it's not so much baking as it is cooling this candy to make this beautiful, dark, luscious, flavorful, sticky candy. On okay, top now of on the popcorn, did you buy buttered or plain? I got the plain. Okay. I got the plain because. And do you recommend that? I do because you've got butter in that sauce and you, want, you don't want any flavors to inadvertently compete with this delicious candy that we've made. So the plainer you can get it, the better. Now, if you choose to make microwave popcorn or something, read that label and make sure that it's either completely plain okay, or Okay, I probably need to salt. dump this out. That's right. And when you, this is actually great. See when these little threads start forming between the candy? Yep. If you've got that, it is good to go. Because I have learned you want to get this out of the bowl yeah, before it starts setting up. Now, if any does happen to stick to the bowl, you can, we can just eat that out later. That's the cook's <laughs> treat. That's what we'll we did behind the later. scenes on the very, very right. show. So we're going to put this in the oven, and it's only on 250. We're really just drying out that candy. We're not cooking it anymore. And I kind of like the idea of having some of it not so coated. Exactly. Just, A little it, contrast. So you've got your little salty bite from the peanuts. You've got your more candy bites, you've got the fluffy popcorn. To be so simple, it really is a delightful treat. It's no wonder it has stayed popular for 50 years. God, 50 years. Yes. And you know, we did a book signing last mm -hmm. night at the White Crane, had so many wonderful uh, people come by and just express their interest in the mm -hmm. book. And looking at the back of it, she's got pictures of all of the, the different cookbooks that you pulled from, well, that the recipes pulled from at Southern Living. And people said, oh my gosh, I haven't made that recipe right. in all those years. We did um, the saltine candy. Right. We did the little Swedish wedding cookies. Uh -huh. We did a pimento cheese that is unbelievable. Unreal. That pimento cheese came from Okay, Greenland, now I'm, I'm getting carried away here. But it was Because we're going to put this in a 250 degree oven, right. correct? Right. And then you're going to stir every 15 minutes. Exactly. So I'll get it in the oven. When we come back from the break, we're going to get started on the banana bread, the cream cheese banana bread, and it has a wonderful topping. Uh -huh. So come back with us in just a few minutes, and I'm going to go ahead and get this in the oven. Proper placement of your silverware when you're not using it is actually just as important as how you use it during the meal. So let's start with your knife and fork. When you're cutting a piece of meat, when you're finished with the cutting process, the knife should go on the top right hand side of the plate. When you're not using your fork, it goes in the center of the plate with the handle at four o'clock, not tilted off to the side with the handle over the edge of the placemat. 
When you're completely finished with the meal, your silverware should always be placed in the center with the handles at four o'clock. Whether you're completely finished with all the food or not, that lets the host or hostess know that you've completed. And then finally, if you're using an iced teaspoon to sweeten your iced tea, when you're finished, instead of putting it on the placemat where it might leave a stain, you can also put it on the edge of your dinner plate. So remember, proper use is just as important as proper placement. Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, my special guest tonight is Sherry Castle from Chapel Hill, the author of the brand new Southern Living Community Cookbook. And you know, she, she her, the number of recipes that she read in Southern Living was what? 45,000. 45,000, y'all. I've never read that many words in my life, and I'm not gonna tell you how old I am. So I just think this is amazing, and it is proof is in the pudding because the book is fantastic. Um, while we were away during the break, we had the candied popcorn right. that has to be stirred in the 250 degree oven every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So Sherry got that done. Mm -hmm. Then I got busy at the mixer, which is my friend, and creamed the butter, the cream cheese, added slowly the sugar, and got it really light and fluffy, added two eggs one at a time, and now I've got a very velvety batter because you said this is not a quick bread. It's not a quick bread. We call it banana bread, but it's actually more like a banana and pecan pound cake. It's got that wonderful crumb and then with the streusel on top. So you assemble it like you were making pound cake, not with a whisk like you normally make a quick bread. And that is a great point because there's so much difference in the consistencies of those, which is why I think you're going to really love this recipe. So I'm going to get started with the boring adding the dry ingredients to the mixer. But Sherry's got something that's not boring going on over here with the topping that goes on top. So I'll let you get started on that and I'll get started adding the dry that ingredients. That sounds great. So this banana cake, banana bread as we're calling it, has a wonderful little crumbly streusel topping. So what I have right here is a little bit of light brown sugar, just a touch of all-purpose flour, some pecans, again, they can be toasted if you like that, you know, that bright toasty taste, finely chopped and a touch of cinnamon. So you can use a spoon or you can use your fingers, but when you get that all crumbled up, this is a little bit of melted butter. I'm gonna drizzle over the top. And oh the, wow, that just looks wonderful. It's wonderful, and the trick to a good streusel is don't make it too buttery or too oily. It needs to be light and crumbly. Hmm. And I'm gonna show you a little trick here. I, with my very clean hands, I like to take my fingers and toss this around to make sure it's evenly distributed and then I take my fingers and I squeeze up a few little bits of streusel so you have light crumbly parts and some little bit larger oh, bits wow. and so then it looks like a coffee cake on top like that classic New York well and she cake. was sweet enough to make some in advance and um, I got to sample a little bit earlier and I, I noticed how unique the topping looked on top and you know the the, the eyesight, the, the first look, the first appearance is so important, especially if you're doing this for like gifts, you know, right. to wrap up and, and give to people, that's really nice. You can wrap it up. It also makes a wonderful little quick breakfast for a tea time snack or something if you're doing a lot of holiday entertaining and it freezes like a dream. If it's well wrapped, it will freeze great, so it's another one of those make it ahead, pull it out when the time is right. All right, so now I'm going to get this last bit of leavening in there and I'm gonna get started with the bananas. Go right. straight in the mixer. This is four medium bananas, and I have learned, as I'm sure you as the consummate baker know, the best banana to bake with is one that is evenly speckled with those brown freckles all over it, because it means that they're soft enough and aromatic enough to give you that great banana flavor, and they're not so squishy that they're gonna make your batter too soft. So you oh, want them lightly just, speckled. There's nothing like the smell of this. That's right. Okay, now the pecans. Right. And we've lightly toasted these right. for about five minutes in a 350 degree oven. And as you know, when you can smell them, they're done. Don't wait for them to change yeah, color. And, and that actually happened to us. Exactly. Was going, What's if that you smell? can smell the nuts, they are properly toasted. And then a touch of vanilla there at the end. And then you scrape it into your prepared pans. Now, this, you can make this in either an 8 by 4 pan, but if all you have are 9 by 5 pans, that's going to be all right too. You're going to have a little bit more of a lower loaf, but it's going to work out just fine either way. 
Well, and you know, when I was pulling the pans for the show, um, I actually had a meatloaf in the freezer in my other pan like this. So I said, Sherry, is it okay if my, if my pans don't match? And you know, she gave that, that absolute um, suggestion there. It's all a matter of how much you, you put in the pan. Exactly, and you know, now they make those adorable little decorator uh, disposable pans. You know, some of them are aluminum foil, some are actually a very nice paper stock that have a little pattern on them. Mm -hmm. And those are easy to find around this holiday season at wherever you buy. You know, paper goods. Well, this show, you know, tonight we are right in the midst of getting ready for the end of school for the holidays. So these are great teacher gift ideas, the sure recipes is. from this show and how to put them together. So come back with us. I'm going to be getting this in the pan and getting these in the oven. After the break, we are going to get a milk punch together yes. and then we're going to show you how to display everything we've met, made tonight and a little bit more previews about this wonderful cookbook. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back and I have had the best time tonight. I, I've just loved being with Sherry that much more. You know, she's been with me once before. We have immediately clicked. We have okay. a great relationship um, just on things. You know, she's helping me with ideas about my cookbook and just reading her cookbooks and getting to know her storytelling aspect has been quite a lot of fun. But while we were away during the break, I got the batter in the two greased pans and then Sherry put the wonderful topping and those are in the oven getting ready to come out in just a minute so we can show you what that looks like. But in the meantime, I'm smelling bourbon, Sherry. What you are we doing? You believe it. This is a punch. And you know, the thing I love about punches is it is a one bowl, one pitcher solution to your beverages for your guests. Great. You can either stand behind a bar or you can get on with it and mingle. <laughs> and this is a get on well, with it. This will be a great thing then to serve over the next week or so while you're having people over with the families together. Absolutely, because it can make an evening cocktail or a great brunch cocktail. Now this recipe hails from New Orleans and what we're doing right here is that is chilled whole milk and then this is an equal amount of chilled half and half. You're just not going to believe how easy mm. this is. Just a tiny bit of powdered sugar which makes this not too sweet, just a okay. bit of sweetness a wee splash of vanilla extract, and then we have here a cup of bourbon. Now bourbon is traditional, and it's certainly my favorite, but you know, if you <laughs> prefer brandy, that would work. Oh, you okay. Put dark rum. So put the dark spirit that moves your spirit. Oh, that, isn't that a nice thought? And this can be done ahead, and that's all there is to it. So you can serve it in a punch bowl, you can ladle it into highball glasses, you could put it in a mug, you could put it in a pitcher and let people serve themselves. And then, once it's whisked together, just that easy, you put it We're in gonna the We're going to ladle into. So, I mentioned this is from Louisiana, from New Orleans in particular. The reader that contributed this, shared this with Southern Living, actually lived in New York, but she grew up in that community. So, you know, when you grow up in the South, you take your recipes with you, when, even if no you live in another part joke. of the country. So, this, you put a wee sprinkling of nutmeg on top, and what this reminds me of is eggnog that is not so rich <sighs> and not so thick. And if anybody has any doubts about the raw eggs and eggnog, make milk oh, punch see, instead. This is perfect. Okay, so we're going to move down to the party area and I love these glasses. Oh, you know, Three Monkeys does the best job with us on getting everything together for our, our party display and the kitchen just looks so crisp and beautiful tonight with everything that was done in the cabinets. I just, I love, and when I said, you know, we need Sally and Kathy, bring us some great glasses to go with the milk punch. I just love these glasses. And then a lot of the trays that we use tonight to put some of the dishes on, you know, when you're looking for a special gift, you, this is the kind of thing you might not buy right. for yourself. Right. So these are just end up being treasured heirlooms. I love this, this pattern and they have the dinner plates and we put the bourbon balls on one of the other plates is really great. And then of course, I always love to point out that my friends, John and Brent at Flowers on Broad, when we were getting the outline for the, together for the tonight because the cookbook is so nostalgic. Right. It's so, uh, you, it almost makes you feel like you've gone back in time. And I said, let's do something kind of Williamsburg-y because mm -hmm. it reminds me of that era, so they did that. 
but we've got the bread, right. which is more like a pound cake, right. you said. Banana and pecan. With the topping on it. And then just look how pretty the bourbon balls look on that clear platter. And then we had mentioned with the popcorn that this would be a great gift idea. So even, you know, something that could be used later with a right. candle can be the holder for this wonderful gift. Just wrap that up with, you know, cellophane and tie a bow at the top. But in the meantime, you've got it to snack with. So Sherry, I cannot thank you enough for sharing your book, sharing your talent, helping me get a wonderful um, list of things together to share with our audience for Christmas. I want to remind you that I want you to come back next week, but remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste, and Merry Christmas to you, Merry Sherry. Christmas, Safe travels. Come back and join us again next Saturday for another episode of The Very Vera Show.